I want to talk to you about the very serious subject, the sevenfold sin of those who do not win souls. Yes, you understood me the first time, sin. The sevenfold sin of those who do not win souls. If you are saved, if you are born again, if you are not a soul winner, you are living in sin every day. Every Christian is commanded to win souls. It's the first duty of every Christian. Every Christian who does not win souls is guilty of seven terrible sins, and I'll prove that by the Word of God. May God open our hearts to the importance of the main business He left for us to do. First of all, I want you to see that the Great Commission, as given in Matthew chapter 28 and verses 19 and 20, plainly says that every Christian should win souls. In this scripture, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now remember that Jesus said that the, the twelve apostles were to go to all the world and preach the gospel. But there were only twelve. They couldn't go to more than twelve places. And uh, long since these centuries they have been dead, Jesus must have meant for somebody else to do the work too. And he told them, when you get somebody converted, you baptize them. And then teach the new converts to observe everything I told you to do. So everybody that was saved when Peter preached, Everybody that was won by Andrew, by Philip, and by others of the apostles was commanded, take on yourself the great commission. You do what Jesus commanded these other apostles to do. Every Christian ought to win souls. That's the plain command of God. In fact, that's the main command Jesus Christ left for us. We call it the great commission. No commission, no plan, no work he ever commanded us to do could be more important than this. And these are marching orders for Christians. We're to win souls. Jesus repeated that command when he met John on the Isle of Patmos later. And over in Revelation 22:17, Jesus said when he met John on the Isle of Patmos, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. Everybody who hears it is commanded to say, Come. Did somebody tell you you're commanded to tell others? You can't get out of this plain obligation. It's the main thing the Lord Jesus left for his disciples to do. I remember so well when my mother lay dying. I was less than six years old. Yet how well I remember the very words she said. I remember how she looked that day. I remember the gladness in her face. And uh, she told us what we should do. We must meet her in heaven. And um, so I remember the last words that Jesus gave to us all before he went to heaven were in this great commission to go to the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And if we do that, we'll be soul winners. If you don't take the gospel like Jesus said and get people converted and teach them to be baptized and then teach them to do everything Jesus commanded the apostles to do in the way of preaching the gospel and getting souls saved, if you don't do that, you're in rebellion, you're in disobedience. Let me say then, sin number one of a Christian who does not win souls is the sin of disobedience to the main command that Jesus ever gave. You're guilty, you're a wicked, backsliding, disobedient Christian if you're not a soul winner. Now then, sin number two. If you do not win souls, it's because of the sin of lack of love. I'll prove that too. In John chapter 14, remember the Savior said in verse 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And again in verse 23, If a man love me, he will keep my words. If you love Jesus Christ, then keep his commandments. It's quite clear then that in proportion as we love Jesus Christ, we'll do what he tells us to do. As you love the Lord Jesus who died for you, you'll obey him. Now, if you love me, keep my commandments. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Sometimes we say, well, I'd win souls, but I don't have a gift of soul winning. No, no. You say, I'd be a soul winner, but I don't have a gift of gab. Well, there's nothing there that a gift of the Holy Spirit can't cure. But that's not what's wrong with you. What's wrong is your heart has grown cold. You do not love the dear Lord Jesus as you ought. You're living in the sin of a cold heart, of lack of love. Or you do what Jesus said. This is back of all the lack of our soul winning effort. This is the reason for our disobedience, the main command. Sin number two is lack of love for Jesus Christ. He so had said so himself. Number three, sin number three. If you're not a soul winner, it's because you do not follow Jesus. 
You know, we sing so many songs about following Jesus, trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, and we sing, where he leads me, I'll follow, and you never win a soul. Why sing a lie? You know that the Scripture says in Matthew 4, 19, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And Jesus said it in Mark 1, 17, Come ye after me, and I'll make you to become fishers of men. If you're not a soul winner, it's because you don't follow Jesus closely. You know, he commanded us to follow him. He said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You remember the Scripture says, Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ. And Jesus said in John chapter 20 that even as my Father sent me, even so send I you. We should follow Jesus, but if you don't win souls, you're not following Jesus. Someone says, I don't know how to win souls. I wish I could grow to be a soul winner. You can. It's easy. Just follow Jesus. He'll make you into a soul winner. And everybody who isn't a soul winner, it's because you don't follow Jesus. It's an open and shut case. Those who follow Jesus, He makes them into soul winners. If you don't follow Him, then you're not a soul winner. And it's your fault. You're living in rebellion and disobedience. You're not following Jesus. You're a far off. I don't say you're not saved. I don't say you haven't been converted. But I say that you're living in sin, the sin of not following Jesus. If you don't win souls, so says the very clear word of Jesus himself. Here's sin number four, and I ask you to think carefully about it. Remember that in John chapter 15, we are told that you are to abide in Christ. John 15, 4 and 5, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. You can't do it without Jesus. Somebody says, I tried to win souls. I intended to, but I... You can't do it without Jesus. Somebody says, I tried to win souls. I intended to, but I... I can't. I can't get anybody saved. I invited people to church and they won't come. I talked to my children. They won't listen to me. I can't get anybody saved. Somebody says, I know. I know why. Jesus just said, you can't do it except you abide in me. And he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. Not just a few. You can win lots of people if you really abide in Him. That's what He said. So let's face what Jesus said now. Your sin, if you do not win souls, is the sin of not abiding in Christ, not being wrapped up in Him, not being filled with His Word, not walking in His steps, not being wholly surrendered to Him, not being absorbed with Him. You're not abiding in Christ or you'd be a soul winner. Jesus Christ said it. I didn't say it. And here's a plain command that you have disobeyed. You have missed the way. You're out of the will of God. You're not winning souls because you don't abide in Christ. So says the Word of God. If you're a soul winner and bringing forth much fruit, it's because you abide in Christ. But if you're not a soul winner, it's because you are in this sin of not abiding in Him and His fullness and His Word and His power, not abiding in you. You know, when a, a branch of a vine bears fruit, it's because the sap from the vine flows right on through into the branch, and there's the power, there's the food, there's the blossom, and then the fruit, because the branch has all the power of the vine, and a Christian can have all the power of Christ, our vine, if you abide in Him. And if you don't, it's because of this sin. It's a sin of not winning souls. That's sin number four. I come now to sin number five. Everybody who doesn't win souls is guilty of dishonesty in a sacred trust. That's very, that's a very sharp word, isn't it? That's a serious charge, isn't it? That's a terrible sin, isn't it? But there it is. I'll prove it to you again. In Romans, the first chapter, Paul writes to the people at Rome, and he says in verse 14 and verse 15, I'm debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Paul said, you know why? I'm trying to come to Rome. I don't care if I get in jail. 
I don't care if I'm there with a chain on my hand in two years. I don't care if I get my head chopped off. I'm bound to come to Rome. What's the matter, Paul? Paul says I have a debt to pay, and I'm an honest man. I've got to do it. I must pay my debt. What is your debt, Paul? You remember, don't you, one time Paul said, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Paul said, If I preach it willingly, then I, I, I receive a reward. If I don't preach it willingly, I must preach it. A dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. I have a debt to pay. You know, it took the blood of Jesus Christ to keep me out of hell. I'm not my own man. You're not your own. It took as much of the blood of Christ to keep you out of hell as it did me, or as it did any preacher, as it did the Apostle Paul. And you have a debt to pay. If you don't pay it, you're crooked. If you don't pay your honest debt and carry the gospel to those to whom you owe it, you're guilty, you're disobedient, you're crooked, you're dishonest in a sacred trust. I'm, I'm thinking of a man who died and left his estate to be administered by his partner in business. It was understood that the widow should be cared for, and the children would have money laid by so they could go to college. But when the time came the children should go to college, the money was all wasted and gone. It was administered falsely, and the administrator had used the funds of the man who died in trusting him with it. The man had used it for his own purposes, and the money was squandered and gone. How wicked. It was dishonesty and a sacred trust. And Jesus died, and he gave you a plain command. He gave you a command, and you are to pass it on, the gospel to others. Did you think, did you think that Jesus died for you alone?